Welcome back to Fix It and Post. My name is Nick. Today, we are going to look at how to make this car drive on the road. This, this effect right here. Now, it's not particularly difficult to do, actually. It's super simple. Uh, we're going to try a few different things. We're going to get the reflections to move left and right of the car as it goes round the path. But more so than that, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set this up. And guys, a whole bunch of you out there are not subscribed to the channel, but you are watching the videos. So, do me a favor, just click the subscribe button. It'll just take a second. And if you don't like what you're watching, then just unsubscribe. It's pretty much that easy. Now, your boss might come in and go, hey, I need you to basically make a car drive on a road around a circuit. And you might be thinking, all right, well, let's try and do that. So we'll set up the road and we'll make this first comp 1920 by 1080. Let's set up the road itself. Okay, so here we go. We'll make it a white background, why not? Now let's draw our road. We're going to get the pen tool here and we're going to make the road a dark gray. And we're just going to draw a quick little road. So let's go. Let's make it like this sort of crazy shape. It doesn't really matter what the shape is as long as the, the corners are not so sharp. But even if it is, even if it is, you know, we'll make it this crazy, crazy shape. We'll make it even crazier than that. Let's make it like this. So, all right, let's make the road a little bit thicker. Ooh, look at that. Let's make the road super thick. Thick. All right, here we go. Now, let's go in here and we're going to duplicate this shape. And we're going to press Control D or Command D. And then we're going to make this top layer white and then shrink it down so it's very thin. More like the dotted checkers on the road. We're going to go in here and we're going to go stroke. And then we're going to go, oh, we're going to go stroke. And then we're going to go dashes and then plus, and then you see the dashes and we're going to just adjust the dashes until they kind of look a bit more evenly spaced, more like road marks. Now that's your first thing done. Now we're going to get the car. Now we've got a few cars here we can pick from, um, you know, let's go to the garage here. Let's see which one we want to use. Maybe we'll use the blue one today. All right, let's cut this one out. This is just an illustrator file, just in case you are wondering. And I'm going to uh, make the origin point the center. So I'm going to press uh, alt command, sorry. I'm going to press option command home or control alt home for those on PC. And we're going to center it up by pressing alt home or command home. And we're just going to shrink it down. So it is like the size of the thing. Now you may be wondering, this is what you would probably be doing if you haven't done this before. So what you would normally do, I used to do it this way. Is you go up here and you go start. Okay. You want to start it here. Let's set a keyframe and we'll go, okay, let's set it here. Now let's make it go. Let's go a bit further and we'll make it go down here. And then in order to make it just go down that one section, we've got to curve it a little bit and we've got to curve it down this way. And you know, this is fairly tedious, but you know, this is the way you would normally do it. And then you got to also rotate the car. So we're going to rotate it this way and then we're going to go da da da. And then we're going to go da da da. Uh, make sure that it's rotating as we do it, but we have to adjust in the middle here because you know, cars don't slide that way. So we have to kind of uh, adjust it as we go. Uh, yeah, look, it looks like it's sliding out. Um, look, pretty tedious. Um, pretty tedious way to do it. Um, if we had to do this all the way through, I would say, you know, don't bother because that is just really painful. There is an easier way. Now, here we go. This is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to grab the path here and uh, we're going to go to the path down here and then we're going to copy this. So we're going to edit, copy. Now here's where the magic happens. Let's go on to the position. What do you think is going to happen, guys? All right, I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste this data and see what happens. My word, what just happened? All right, so it just copied the path onto, you know, onto the road. Look at it, it just hugs it perfectly. Now, if I just play this back, I'll just show you what happens. So look at this. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> now, that's great, but it goes around the path by itself, which is in itself fantastic. However, there is a problem. Um, it's not sticking, it's not going forward in the road. And we wanted to kind of incrementally turn to follow the road. Now, how do we fix that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this layer and we're going to go transform. And then we're going to go to or auto orientate. And then we're going to go orientate on path. Now let's watch this. Now that's looking a lot better, right? Nice. Now we've got some slot car racing going. Amazing. All right, now this is going a little bit fast, so I'm going to pull this out. Now, what's nice here is that when it's pasted the position keyframes down here, the motion path here around the circuit, 
it just these keyframes here are all uh, basically equidistant to each other. So you'll always get a consistent space all around the uh, the path. So it's going at a constant speed. So what we can do is we can just drag this out and we can actually make it go for longer. So watch this. How easy is that? Now that's pretty cool. And what's even better than that is that you can go, all right, I want to loop this. So if we put an expression on it, loop out, and then we go cycle, press enter. This will just go on forever, which is pretty dope. Nice, huh? All right, so we can also put some other fancy things on here, like a drop shadow, which is also very nice as well. Now, if we put a drop shadow on like so, and I'm using the Video Copilot plugin uh, F FX console, which will basically pull up this uh, little shortcut menu for me. But if you want, you can go over here and go effects and library like an old school person. But I definitely, definitely please encourage you to go get FX console because it's much, much more efficient. Drop shadow, let's go. Now let's drop a shadow onto this thing. We'll just turn this layer. We'll just put turn this layer, the road layer off and just see if we can get a drop shadow going. Now, right now it's going that way. Um, it doesn't really matter which way we're going, but we want it to be above it and we want it to be a pretty soft. Um, now I learned this, I learned this trick from good old Ben Marriott, another Aussie as well. Um, he's a good dude, very smart guy. There we go. Now, ideally, if the sun was coming this way, the, the shadow will always be going this way, right? So that's what should happen. However, when we do play it back, that's not what's ha that's not what's happening. You can see the shadows just following it around, and that's obviously just a limitation with the uh, plugin itself. It's just looking at the position of the car as it's going around itself. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to up here and we're going to cut these effects out, and then what we're going to do is we're going to nest this. I mean, we're going to pre-compose it. So we're going to press Shift Command C. And make sure you move all the attributes into the new composition. Now, I should have called it something different, but anyway. Now let's paste the now let's paste the effects back on. Now you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see there's a shadow there, but it's a bit, it's not, it's we need to fix these shadows a little bit. But as you can see, the shadow is now in one direction, which is exactly what we want. Ha, <laughs> one direction. All right, let's, uh, let's, soft let's soften the shadow a little bit and make the distance a little bit closer. And likewise with this one, we'll make the distance a little bit closer. Oh, wrong one. Make the distance a bit closer. And we'll probably do another one just, just for gags. I reckon the softness can come up in this one a bit. I think the softness is a bit too much on this one. Hang on, I'm going to make this a bit darker. And bring the softness down on this. Pull this one across. And the softness down on this. And pull it across a little bit more too. There we go, that's looking a bit better. All right, now let's turn the road back on. Now you'll see that the shadow actually is in a constant direction. So it's going that direction now, which is good. I mean, we can always vary where we want it to be, but it'll always be in the same, like it's consistent, which is what we want. Um, let's actually make it more facing up. So we'll make it all 90 degrees. Or we'll make it all zero degrees. So the shadow is facing to the top of the screen, which is fantastic. Nice, so you can kind of see the shadow going around as we do that. All right, so now we've got that down. Um, let's put a little bit of a reflection on the car so that as it goes round, it's also kind of reflecting light as it comes around. So we're going to use another effect called Bevel Alpha. Now it's very hard to see, but it is there. I'll turn it on and off as you can see. So there isn't a bevel on it and we can kind of make it, you don't have to be too over the top with it. I would probably suggest being very conservative with it. We'll make it go the other direction of where we are from the car. So if the shadow is going up that way, we're going to make the, the light. That means the light's coming from this direction. So just so you can see, there's a slight light coming from this side. So as you watch this, you're going to see that the light will come from this direction. 
I'll see if you can see it in the close-up. It's a bit hard to see here, but the light will shift according to which side of the car is facing uh, the light, I guess. And as you can see from this side too, it'll shift sides. You can kind of see the reflection is coming from that side now. All right, so that is cool. But how do we do that close-up effect that I was showing? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's get a new null and we'll make it, uh, we'll just put it here. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing we did before. So we're gonna copy the path, edit, copy, and we're gonna paste it onto the position keyframes as we did before. Now that is in the wrong place. So I'm just gonna move these keyframes to the beginning. And we're gonna find out where the keyframes ended, where I ended my last set of keyframes, because we're gonna make it exactly the same. So I just jumped into the pre-comp there and voila, there is the magic point. So we're just gonna drag this out. So it snaps, I'm gonna hold down shift till it snaps. So now, as you can see, there is a null that is following the uh, the car as well. Now, we're gonna turn on a couple of things. So we're gonna turn on the car layer and make it a 3D layer, as well as the road. I'm gonna rename this road just so you can understand what I'm doing. And now we're gonna to go to camera and we're gonna make a new camera and we're gonna parent that and now we're going to parent the camera to the null. And then what we're going to do, and watch this, this is good, this is crazy. So now look at this. As you can see here, it's not zoomed in, but you can kind of see what it is. The camera is now following the null. So all we have to do now is just reposition our camera so that it's on top of the car. And that's pretty much all we need to do. So check this out. We're going to get our camera tool and we're going to move it so that the the car is dead center of the screen and we're going to zoom in just a touch now i will admit the car model is a bit small and the only way i think i can fix that is to actually come in here and um, basically triple or quadruple the size of this so i'm going to bring in my trusty calculator because my mass is not very good so let's say 1080 times three, three, two, four, zero. Yep. All right, let's make that that size. And we're gonna make this. Let's hope the proportions are correct because uh, this would be bad if it doesn't. <laughs> Actually, what was I gonna do? I need to parent this to a null and triple that size. All right, so hopefully ratio wise, that should be exactly the same. Um, and so obviously this is gonna to be too big now, but that is okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink this down to 33.33333, and that should be correct. And there you go, that should, that should fix the scaling issue as we have here. All right, now let's see this in action. All right, that's looking pretty good, pretty smooth. Pretty nice. Now, it does look very computery at the moment, so I'm gonna just put a little bit of a wiggle effect as I do with everything that I do. And in fact, I'll do it on both the position and on the uh, on the rotation as well. So we'll just wiggle the null just a touch. Not a lot, nothing drastic, just, you know, just something, just a little bit of something, something, just to give it a little bit of a, little bit of realism, just so it doesn't feel like it's just locked on the whole time so it just moves a little bit that's probably still i can probably put a little bit more on a little bit more on the wiggles let's make it 50. maybe even more on the rotation let's go really crazy all right so this is cool but there's one more trick i want to do which is basically to always have the car orientating towards the front, bit like a video game. Cause right now we're just following it from the top like a helicopter, but I want to be able to follow it, you know, like a micro machine. Did you ever play that game, Micro Machines? Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to this null and we're going to select it and then go to transform. And you guessed it, we're going to auto orientate and then a long path and bam, check this out. Now we're orientated at the front. And what's cool is that you can actually set the rotation in any direction you like, and it'll just follow that direction. So if we wanted to go to the left, for example, here, um, it'll just stay that direction. And what's kind of fun is you can kind of see these little cool reflections in the car kind of moving with it as it goes around the track as well. 
Um, yeah, so it doesn't matter where you go. And I mean, you can even set keyframes in this as well. So for example, if you went, you know, set a keyframe here, went to two seconds and you know, we wanted to spin it this way just for whatever reason. And then we wanted to spin it back. Um, we could also do that as well. And then we'll set some easy eases and check this out. So, you know, it kind of spins as, as we go. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it in a nutshell, uh, if you know what I mean. I'll just show you another trick just in case you do need this because it did come in handy for me recently. And uh, that was, um, this is just another example where I'm just gonna take these cameras off just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So let's just say that you wanted to go and stop here and then move off, right? So you could do that in keyframes, but because we've already set it, we've already set the parameters up in terms of the speed of everything, um, th these are all equidistant in terms of you don't want to kind of mess with these frames too much. Um, one thing you can do is put a time remap feature on there. And as you can see here, if you wanted to pick a moment in the future where it where it stops, hang on, let me just turn this onto a quarter because it's just freaking out. Okay, just say you wanted to stop here, for example. So what we'll do is we'll put a keyframe there and then we'll just let it keep going. And maybe we'll put another keyframe there. We'll say you want to stop there and then keep going. Another keyframe there. And then we'll keep going. And then we'll just come back to the end, which is there. So that's where it loops. Now, just say we want to stop. So what I would do is grab this frame and keyframe and then put next to it. So it's the same. And then we'll just ease these in. So we'll press F9, ease them in. And likewise, we'll do that with this. And likewise, we'll do that with this. And watch this. Stops, then goes. Stops, and then goes. Stops, and then goes. And stops, and then goes, and then keeps going. So that's kind of pretty nifty, right? Um, there's another thing you can do, which is, for example, if you wanted to go around here, for example, and then decide, you know what, I need to, I need to basically uh, go back, right? So you come to about here, let's set a keyframe around here and we want to reverse all the way back. Um, what we can do is we can set a keyframe there and then we'll copy that keyframe and put it that way. And then we'll copy this keyframe and put it back here. And likewise, if you ease these two keyframes here, watch this, it'll go all the way to the middle, stop, and then start reversing up. It's pretty much as easy as that. It's pretty cool, right? Like this is this is a very useful kind of um, workflow, I think, because there's tons of stuff which you could use this in applications for, especially with objects that need to move across the screen in a nice fluid motion. It means you can draw your paths out and basically um, do whatever you like with them once you've got them retimed. Anyway, guys, I hope that's been helpful. Hit me up in the comments if there's anything else you want to learn, and I'll see you next time. And guys, don't forget to check out my Instagram page as well at nickbenku underscore motion. Uh, look, I would love to see what you guys create and tag me. Tag me in these posts. I want to see what you guys are creating, and especially if you're using the tutorials to do so. I want to see it, guys. Thank you, guys. You are the best.